Hello, Phil Spencer here. And as you can tell from the headlines, we are starting to get towards business time in the season as far as contracts are concerned. Um, a number of Middlesbrough players are uh, making the headlines this week uh, with comments and speculation about what the future might hold uh, with regards to their futures at the Riverside Stadium. Now, obviously, there's still a couple of months left of the, uh, of the season uh, for Middlesbrough. Technically, we still don't really know uh, what division we're going to be playing in uh, next season. Uh, there's still that, uh, that outside opportunity of uh, squeezing into the playoffs or although it does look very unlikely. Um, and that means that uh, for Middlesbrough, it's uh, quite difficult to nail down uh, an exact plan of uh, who's going to be in uh, Michael Carrick's um, thoughts moving forward um, going into next season. But I think given that Middlesbrough look all but set to be staying in the championship, um, I don't want to get into the uh, playoff picture and predictions and that sort of thing because it's been that sort of up and down campaign where I may end up with uh, with egg on my face by doing so. Um, it does kind of feel that Middlesbrough will be in the championship next season. And so there is a, a relative degree of certainty uh, that Michael Carrick knows what he's going to be aiming for next season. Um, obviously, that has a uh, an impact on uh, on the budget and plans going into the other uh, summer transfer window as well. Um, so... Yeah, it's going to be an interesting couple of months. There's a few high-profile players who are coming to the end of their contracts uh, this summer and, and a couple who uh, look highly likely uh, to be uh, attracting interest um, as we move towards the other summer transfer window as well. And uh, here's my take on uh, what Middlesbrough should be doing with them and uh, what the, uh, the key considerations will be uh, when thinking about their futures. Luke Ayling is a player who, in my opinion, Middlesbrough really need to be keeping at the Riverside Stadium this summer. Um, obviously, the uh, the right back uh, moved to the club uh, during the January transfer window. Um, he arrived on a uh, six month loan deal from Leeds United. Although the, uh, the slight caveat to that is the fact that his uh, his contract at Ellen Road is coming to an end this summer, which effectively means um, that he could be Middlesbrough's player for uh, for absolutely nothing uh, should we choose to uh, to make the move permanent. Now, obviously, the uh, the loan deal is um, it's it, I guess it's kind of a bit of like a trial period for him. Um, seeing how he fits into uh, into Middlesbrough's plans, um, seeing whether Michael Carrick sees him as the kind of player that can help the club moving forward. Um, right back has always been a a, a tricky spot, um, particularly under Michael Carrick's um, tenure. Um, no one's really been able to sort of nail down that spot convincingly. Um, and that means that uh, going into the summer, it is going to be a key area of consideration. It's going to be a position that Middlesbrough are looking to strengthen. Uh, we do need to uh, to add some quality in that sort of department, and so it'll be interesting to see what Michael Carrick chooses to do. Now, for Ailing, it's um it's been a bit of a, a difficult one since he's moved to Middlesbrough. Um, obviously, a lot of people know of Luke Ailing from his time at Leeds United. Um, it was during his time under Marcelo Bielsa uh, where he really made his name. Obviously, he became a, a Premier League level uh, right back due to his uh, his high intensity, um, his ability to uh, to get up and down the flank, and his uh, ultimately his leadership as well. He's a really popular figure um, around Leeds even now. Um, I remember when when he did sign for Middlesbrough, I was getting a lot of messages from Leeds fans saying, uh, "Take care of Bill," which is obviously his his nickname, um, and. Uh, just yeah, just a lot of good feeling for him, and a lot of Leeds fans who um, who want him to do well uh, with Middlesbrough. And I think since he's come to Middlesbrough, I think there's no doubt in that he's a really popular figure. Um, you're sort of seeing it um, during his conduct on the pitch, but also off the pitch as well. He's just he's a really likable character, uh, but he's not aloof. He's someone who uh, who comes in and he's uh, he's he's a leader. He's someone who's going to be a, a massive character in the dressing room. And uh, I think that's something that Middlesbrough really need to kind of take on board as they move into next season. Um, I think. It can't be underestimated that during the January transfer window, we lost Matt Crooks, um, who was a, a massive character uh, in the dressing room, one of those kind of leadership figures who was in there as well. And you do sort of look at Middlesbrough's, um, Middlesbrough squad at the moment, and you do sort of wonder where that kind of leadership's coming from. Um, a lot is always said about uh, people like Johnny Howson. Um, he is obviously a leader. He's, uh, he's Middlesbrough's captain, uh, but he is quiet um, by, by nature. He tends to lead more by example, is, uh, is what people sort of seem to say. And obviously the, the conversation about Housen is uh, is for another day as to whether he is deserving of a uh, another 12-month contract. In my opinion, he is, uh, but I digress. Um, I think for Middlesbrough, it's going to be absolutely crucial that we do add more leadership into that team because I think that is some like an area where we've kind of struggled this season. Now, that has been partially down to the uh, the injuries uh, suffered to uh, to Dara Lenahan and Tommy Smith, who are two of the uh, the biggest leaders um, in the squad. Obviously, they've been out for the bulk of the campaign, and we have really missed them both on and off the pitch. And I think with Ailing, he is the sort of player who was has come in uh, not just to fill an on field position at right back, but someone who's come in to uh, to really offer that leadership in the in the dressing room as well. Now, his start to life at Middlesbrough, um, it wasn't it wasn't great. Um, he didn't really look like the sort of player that, um, obviously, he, he'd been at Leeds United. He's 32 years old now. Um, he is a little bit older. Um, he did 
mentioned this, I guess, in his, uh, his post-match interview um, against QPR about how he's, he's maybe finding it a little bit trickier um, to uh, to perform exactly how he did at Leeds by getting up and getting back and having no issues with it. We've seen it a few times where he has been um, caught out when he has um, gone marauding up down the right-hand flank. Um, and then obviously the other teams countered and um, obviously caught him, caught him. Um, and it, it, it's, it, it's something that he's going to have to uh, to consider moving forward. It's something that um, he's he's certainly got a, a hell of a lot to offer um, at Championship level and for a club like Middlesbrough. Um, in my opinion, it's it may well be that he has to tailor his game slightly. I think it comes for every marauding right back or every uh, wide player who uses their pace and work rate to um to to great effect for a team. Uh, the day sort of comes where they have to realize what their their limitations are. I guess at that point, um, I'm not saying that he needs to be the sort of defender who um who who sits back and doesn't get forward anymore, and is just very much a defensive minded right back. Uh, but I think just maybe just being a little bit more mindful of it. Not taking himself into positions where um, where he will be caught out, um, and that would ultimately make him a, a much safer a pair of hands at right back. I think that's something that he's done a little bit more in the last few games. Um, I was mentioning just then about how um, how his, his start to life at the club wasn't great. He did get caught out a few times. Um, he, I mean, he has come into a, a a very up and down Middlesbrough team, so it's been very tricky for him to sort of. Um, sort of adapt and it's, it's not like he's come into a, a team that's winning every week where it's quite an easy transition and um, it has been quite difficult for him to uh, to come in but what we've seen over the last few weeks is just exactly what he can have to offer um i mentioned about his leadership and his, his defensive qualities but we've also seen what he's like moving forward as well um three assists in uh, in three games um coming into this week is uh, is exactly what he's got to offer that ability to uh, to go forward to drive forward and the, the ability to uh, to pick out the pass and pick out a teammate has been absolutely crucial and that has been a massive part of Middlesbrough's ability to um to win three games in a row now i think as far as Ailing's long term future is concerned um it seems very much that his future at Ellen Road um is um well, it's done he's not going to be going back to Ellen Road it seems highly unlikely that he's going to go back there and get his uh, get his opportunity uh, leads obviously the aspirations of getting up to the premier league as far as they're concerned they will be hoping to be able to do that uh, but even if they don't um in the season they've been playing with uh, with Archie Gray and Connor Roberts Right back to uh, two quality operators, Archie Gray in particular. Uh, looks like a player who's going to be a proper star moving forward. And so it just really seems like his days um, leads are done as far as Ailing is concerned. And so for him, it's about finding the uh, the next home where he can spend the next couple of years of his career. Um, he's obviously settled in the North Yorkshire area. And that's obviously made the middles removed even more attractive for him. And so for him, he will want this move to work out. He will be hoping that he can earn a contract with uh, with the club. And that's going to be something that um, they will certainly be looking to do in the other final matches of the season. Um, as far as I'm concerned, we have started to see the best of Luke Ayling. Um, he is a player who uh, has plenty to offer um, on and off the pitch. Um, I think one of the, the main dilemmas that Michael Carrick faces it's um it's about those just that right back option um I've, I've talked about this a little bit on on twitter or x or whatever the hell it's called these days um about how i would like to keep luke ailing um at, at middlesbrough and a few people have rightly pointed out that um obviously tommy smith is uh, is still there um obviously tommy smith has been out injured for, for the almost the large chunk of, uh, of this season um, he's going to be back, hopefully, in time for the start of next season. And so that, for Middles, proposes a bit of a dilemma because are they going to go down the option of having two um, experienced right-backs on their books? Is that something that they're going to be looking to do? But Do they want two players of that sort of profile or are they going to want a, a more experienced defender and then uh, bring in maybe a, a younger, more exciting, more energetic, more pacey sort of right-back option who is, the, uh, I guess, the long-term solution to, uh, to that problem moving forward? Um I'd love to say the answer to that, but I don't. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I think right back is a position where um, Middlesbrough probably look to save a little bit of money. I mean, th th there's going to be a number of positions that we need to strengthen over the summer. Um, you do look at um, the, the amount that we've spent on transfers over the last couple of years, and we haven't spent a huge amount. And it's obviously this new this new business model where we're keen not to overspend on players. And right back isn't a position where you want to be going out and uh, splashing the cash on a player if we've got a number of options who can come in and do a really good, solid job. People like Luke Ayling and Tommy Smith. Um, I think that, for me, would be uh, the best possible solution there. Um, whether he chooses to keep both of them, I'm not entirely sure. Um, obviously, you've also got the um, the Anthony Dyke, uh, Dyke steal uh, situation as well. Um, he is uh, going into the final 12 months of his contract. 
um, clearly isn't fancied by Michael Carrick this season, and a lot of people would like to see him given a uh, given more of an opportunity. Um, he's shown in in in, in flurries uh, exactly what he's about. He, he can be a, a a good player at Championship level. Um, for me, I, I think he's all right. I think he's a decent option for Middlesbrough in the Championship. He's certainly not someone that I'd be looking to uh, to bring into that right back spot permanently moving forward. And I think crucially for Middlesbrough, he's someone who we could get a little bit of money for in the summer. Um, it's not going to be a massive amount, but I think for Middlesbrough, it might make sense for them to catch in on him, uh, get a get a million, two million, something like that for him, uh, give him the chance to uh, to reignite his career elsewhere, uh, and Middlesbrough can uh, can look to uh, to build that right back position. Um, around that, so I think as far as um, as Ailing's concerned, it's uh, definitely a case of looking to earn that contract um, in these final weeks. I think he's really starting to uh, to win over a number of Middlesbrough fans. Um, I saw a lot of him when he was at Leeds United, and I know exactly what he's got to offer. So I've been a big fan of the Luke Ailing signing from the very start. Um, some people have been um, a little bit taking a little bit longer to um, for him to convince them, which is absolutely fair enough because he, he wasn't great in those first few weeks. But maybe what we're starting to see is a player who's getting up to full fitness, getting up to full sharpness and really starting to show what he's capable of. And I think for Middlesbrough, I don't think they can afford to let a player, but a leader like him, slip through their hands as well. Because if Middlesbrough don't snap him up this summer, he will go to another club in the Championship and he will be a top, top signing for someone this summer. Um, as he does look to get a, a full season under his belt next season. So my message to Michael Carrick would be snap him up, get him signed up for a new contract, save the money for uh, other, other areas in the team. That would be my um, my advice around Luke Ayling. And uh, hopefully uh, he can prove exactly why he was such a popular figure at Leeds United by uh, doing such a job, uh, being such a leader and being a key part of, uh, of the club and the community um, over the next couple of years. There's another player who has um, attracted headlines this week um, due to his comments about his future as well. Um, he was speaking to uh, to BBC T Sport following the uh, the victory over Birmingham City um, on Tuesday night. And he was quizzed about his uh, his contract situation. Um, he gave a, a typically coy response, as, uh, as footballers tend to do. They don't want to uh, put the cards on the table too much at this kind of point. And he was saying basically that uh, he's relaxed about his future. He was saying that uh, the talks are likely to happen uh, at the end of the season. Uh, but as far as he's concerned, he's, he's relaxed and um, there's no sort of pressure from his point of view on with regards to uh, to what happens. But as far as Middlesbrough are concerned, it's a uh, massive, massive decision um, financially more than anything. Um, everyone knows what Paddy McNair has to offer on the pitch. He's, he's been with the club um, a, a number of years now. He's probably our, one of our longest serving players. Uh, I have to do the research on that. But he's been at the club for a number of years and he really is kind of part of the furniture. In my opinion, he's sort of taken for granted in the, in that um that role as a kind of club stalwart, really. Uh, but I think as far as Paddy McNair is concerned, it's going to be an interesting one to see whether Middlesbrough do look to keep him at the club this summer. Um, obviously, he's, a, he's an international player. Um, his versatility is um, is there for all to see. He's, he's played in just about every position for Middlesbrough since, uh, since he signed for the club from Sunderland. Uh, central midfield, defensive midfield. He's played right back. He plays centre-back. Um, centre-back is obviously where he's uh, most naturally in the playing, but he does have that ability to uh, to bring the ball out of defence and become kind of hybrid sort of uh, sort of number six kind of player. Um, and I think for Middlesbrough fans, it's it's a little bit frustrating because everyone knows the quality that Paddy McNair's got, but we don't really see it on a, on a regular basis. Um, he's, he's been in and out, in and out of the uh, the team this season. Um, I know there's been there's been injuries and, and that sort of thing, and maybe Michael Carrick and Middlesbrough have sort of had one eye on the other summer as well, because his contract means that it is going to be a uh, a kind of make or break decision uh, with regards to his future. Now, as far as I'm uh, as far as I'm informed, Paddy McNair is one of the uh, the highest earners uh, at Middlesbrough, uh, possibly the highest earner, um, and that means that uh, for Middlesbrough they've got a big decision to make on um, on what they do with him moving forward. Um, obviously, as part of the uh, the new footballing structure under under Kieran Scott, um, having a uh, sort sort of a, a robust wage structure is going to be a, a massive part of that. It already is a massive part of that. And so, what they're looking to do is they're kind of looking to bring everyone's uh, wages into a, sort of a similar kind of standing. Um, all of their senior players, they want them within a certain kind of bracket, they want to make sure that no one is being overpaid compared to other players at the club. And ultimately, if they are going to be giving someone um, top dollar or putting them at the top end of the year, the wage structure, they've really got to be earning it. And they've got to be that sort of star man uh, that Middlesbrough can't afford to, uh, to lose for uh, for such a uh, such a reason. Now, for Paddy McNair, it's, it's going to be interesting because Middlesbrough have been able to get by without him in defence. Um, obviously, this season we've, uh, we've seen 
a day off Rye and at the start of the season, Dan Darrell Lenahan, both of them are on first team regulars. Uh, since Lenahan um, uh, went off injured, um, since he's been out for the bulk of the campaign, it's kind of opened the door for Rav Vandenberg. Um, I'm going to get on to uh, to him in a, in a little bit to discuss his future as well. Uh, but he's really come on, and there's no way that Vandenberg's losing his spot in the, in that back line because he's just been one of Middlesbrough's top, top players this season. And so that really kind of creates a bit of a problem for Paddy McNair because it's it's not really clear where he fits into Middlesbrough's plans. Um, if he was to sign a, a new contract at the club, you would think that he would be having to take a quite a hefty pay cut um, in order to, uh, to put pen to paper. Um, he, he may not be willing to do that. Um, the fact that He's uh, what he's, he's getting on in what is he twenty eight twenty nine years of age. He's going to be looking for probably his uh, his last big contract, I guess, of his uh, of his career, uh, looking for that last kind of big payday, I guess, and that last kind of maybe three four year contract that will be able to uh, to get somewhere. And will he be looking to uh, to take a pay cut to stay at Middlesbrough? I'm not entirely sure because I'm not completely convinced that um, he will be a, a regular starter under Michael Carrick and whether he will be that kind of person that Michael Carrick looks to build his team and his defence around. Um, I do think that he will be able to get um, a lucrative offer. He's a, he's a quality player. Um, he's, he's proven what he can do in the championship. Um, his international pedigree playing for Northern Ireland uh, stands him apart as well. And obviously he came through the, uh, the Man United Youth Academy, which uh, also adds a uh, huge... Um, credibility to his uh, to his profile, and so I do think that he will get some big offers going into the summer, whether they're in the championship, whether it's clubs around Europe. I'm not entirely sure, but for Middlesbrough, they've just kind of got to weigh up whether breaking the bank for Paddy McNair is going to be the, uh, the the most sensible option, or whether he's the sort of player that they can afford to lose, um, as they uh, given that they've got a, a number of other defensive options and they're looking for sort of like younger profile of player, that kind of up and coming player that they can develop and bring in for a small amount of money or for absolutely nothing and then develop and hone into a, a top level talent. Um, Paddy McNair sort of symbolises the, uh, the old regime um, under under Steve Gibson, under Neil Bowser, um, at the club in previous years where people have been given hefty contracts. Um, players who, um, and, and to be fair, that, that makes it sound like a criticism. I'm not saying that Paddy McNair is not deserving or that he caught, falls into that category of kind of overpaid mercenaries who came in and just did absolutely nothing because he's been he's been brilliant for Middlesbrough over the years that he's been at the club. But you sort of get the feeling that going into this summer, uh, Paddy McNair is the, uh, the sort of player that they will be looking to, uh, to offload um, to get him off the wage bill, to give give him a fresh start as well. He's been at the Riverside for a number of seasons. Um, he was with Sunderland before that as well. So he's been in the Northeast a long time and he may well be looking for a, a new adventure as well. Um, obviously, we, we saw what happened with Brooks. It was his dream to, to play in the MLS. And it'll be interesting to see whether any of those kind of options do um, do appear for Paddy McNair. Um, as I said, it probably will be the last time that he gets a, a, a big three, four year contract given his age. Um, and so I think it'll be quite interesting to see what Middlesbrough do, but also what Paddy McNair wants to do, because it feels to me um, that it might be the the best solution all around, a, a solution that Middlesbrough are happy with and a solution that Paddy McNair are happy with, that they they take hands, wish each other all the best after his years of service. And then he, he goes on and uh, reignites his career elsewhere. And that gives Middlesbrough the opportunity to uh, to give an opportunity to the, the younger players. Uh, freshen up the squad and crucially have a, a bit of a wiggle room in the in the wage budget as well for whether it's bringing in new players or even if it's just um, making sure that uh, they can fall in line financially to make sure that they're not uh, that they're not overspending. So it's going to be an interesting one with regards to Paddy McNair. Uh, my gut instinct will be that he's he, he'll move on uh, this summer. Um, I think it, the, the certainly feeling I think there's certainly a lot that um, that he could offer Middlesbrough moving forward but I think just given the numbers that are going to be involved he's not the source of player um he's not he's not a Johnny House and I guess who was going to be given a, a 12-year rolling contract where it's kind of sort of like low risk and you can time down and see like see whether he's performing see whether he's in Michael Carrick's plans over the next six months or whatever he's he's a player who will be demanding to start he'll be demanding a long-term contract and so I think for Middlesbrough uh, the risk and the numbers associated with that will just make it possibly a deal that they're not quite comfortable making and so for me I think Paddy McNair will probably move on uh, this summer and for me that'll be a, a great move for him um, and it'll be, it'll be great for him to see him uh, to see him reignite his career elsewhere and uh, to see Middlesbrough go in a, in a different direction player who Middlesbrough need to be doing absolutely everything to keep hold of this summer is Rav Vandenberg. Now, he signed uh, last summer. He signed as a uh, fresh-faced 
a teenager from uh, from the Netherlands, uh, someone who Middlesbrough were looking as a as a future signing, um, someone who was uh, expected to come in and probably just take a little bit of time to uh, to to life at the Riverside Stadium, to the demands of the Championship, someone who might get a bit of game time here and there, but it just absolutely hasn't worked out like that for him at all because he has just absolutely ripped it up since he arrived. Um, speculation last summer when Middlesbrough were, were signing him was that um, we see Milan and uh, Borussia Dortmund uh, were among the clubs interested in, uh, in signing Vandenberg. Uh, he chose to come to Middlesbrough, um, which was surprising given the names that were associated. Uh, you often wonder in those kind of situations whether it's a little bit of agent talk, whether it's players kind of uh, oh, sorry, agents trying to uh, to build up their clients and saying, "Look, look, who, look who's interested in them. You're going to have to uh, to pay a stop dollar if you want to uh, to bring them on board." Um, with those kind of clubs involved, you you would think, with all respect to Middlesbrough, that a move to AC Milan or Borussia Dortmund would have been the preferential move. But for Vandenberg, it was it was clear that he wanted to uh, to go to a club where he had a, a genuine opportunity to uh, to play a regular first team football. Um, it's something that's quite. Memorable, really, because you've got to think that if he did go to AC Milan or Dortmund, he, he would have been earning multiples more than what he's earning at Middlesbrough at the moment. Um, he'd have the uh, the opportunity to play in the biggest competitions in the world, in the biggest stadiums in the world, and that would be a massive opportunity for him. But I think what you're seeing is uh, with Vandenberg, but also with other big players at the moment, you're, you're sort of seeing a, a new breed of footballer who is kind of a little bit more strategic Um about their way of uh, the way of progressing through their career and ultimately trying to rise the that rise their way through to the uh, through the ranks. Um, two of the players that do spring to mind are Jude Bellingham and Erling Haaland. Um, Erling Haaland, obviously, he's uh, he's at Man City now. Uh, arguably, well, not arguably, the greatest goal scorer on the planet at the moment. Um, he's just been absolutely sensational. I know he's been injured and stuff more recently, but he's the the, the quality that he's got is is there for all to see. But he could have been playing for one of the world's biggest clubs three, four years ago. But what you've sort of seen is that he's, he's taken a strategic approach to the top. He's made sure that wherever he's going, he's going to be in a in a, in a club, in a team, in a league. Um, he's tailored to him, one where he's going to thrive and he's going to shine and his stock is going to continue to rise. Um, obviously, when he went to uh, went to Borussia Dortmund, he, he had the opportunity to, uh, to go to uh, a number of other clubs. Um, there's been all sorts said. There's always stories coming out about how Manchester United had opportunities to sign him when when he was in Norway or when he was in Switzerland. Um, Real Madrid have been interested as well, but he's kind of remained patient, made sure that he's kind of gone through those steps and made sure that each step he's gone to a club, met the challenge, thrived, and then moved on to the next club. Jude Bellingham, exactly the same. Obviously, uh, came through the Youth Academy at Birmingham City, um, showed his quality there, had absolutely every club um, in the world, knocking on the door for him, he was given the uh, the VIP treatment um, at Manchester United because they wanted to sign him, and I think Real Madrid wanted to sign him at that point. Manchester City, Chelsea, Liverpool, uh, and he surprised everyone by going to Borussia Dortmund. Um, obviously, that for him was a, a massive opportunity, and it was one where he didn't just want to go to a club to uh, to play for a big club. He wanted to go uh, wanted to go somewhere where he knew that he was going to be trusted, where he knew he was going to get the game time, where he knew he was going to get the minutes to uh, to kick on and progress and show what he could do and keep building towards that top level. And you sort of get the feeling with Raf Vandenberg, to bring it back to him, um, that it's exactly the same sort of model that they're kind of like looking to um, work towards. He's, in my opinion, Raf Vandenberg is a player who has the potential to be playing for the top, top team. Um, he, absolute quality. Um, the, the leadership that he shows, for considering he's arguably the youngest member of our uh, regular first team squad is absolutely outrageous. Uh, we all saw the tackle um, against QPR. Um, for anyone who doesn't follow Middlesbrough regularly, that is not an abnormal thing. That's something that he's been doing every week. He's been a, a first team regular. He's been a rock at centre back. And for a player who wasn't really expected to uh, to play every game this season, he's become probably one of the fans of the season and is arguably, in my opinion, the other signing of, uh, of last summer. Now, it'll be very interesting to see what happens with him moving forward. Um, there's going to be a lot of interest in him. Um, I've, I have seen rumours. I, I, I haven't checked these out, but I, I did see rumours that um, that Sheffield United were interested in him. He's not going to go to Sheffield United. He's going to be going somewhere, uh, where which is a, a massive step up. But it's worth noting as well that he's not going to go somewhere where he's not going to play. It's not going to be a situation like Jed Spence, for example, where he goes to a Tottenham or a, or a top four club 
looks at the big payday and just hopes that he kind of makes the grade. If he's moving on to another club, he will absolutely be making sure that it's the right opportunity for him. Uh, the move where he's going to be playing regularly, it's going to be a team that suits his style um, and a situation and a scenario and a setting where he's going to be set up to shine, crucially. So for Middlesbrough, I think they're really just enjoying having him at the moment. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of interest come the summer. Um, I really, really hope that uh, that we don't lose him uh, this summer. Um, I think he's the sort of player who has been absolutely quality. We're, we're really starting to see that quality um, in a Middlesbrough shirt, sure, even though Middlesbrough's performances have been inconsistent at best. I personally would love another 12 months of, uh, of Rav Vandenberg um, in, our, in our central defensive unit. Um, I think it would do wonders for his development. Um, I think it would do wonders for um, the price tag as well. Um, I think another season would be would be crucial, and particularly if he is playing in a team that hopefully will be uh, be challenging for promotion next season. But crucially, you, you just never really know what's going to happen. Um, he is a player who's going to attract high level interest. Um, that could well come this summer. It will depend on what opportunities um, arise for him. Um, but like I said, I, I do get the impression with him that he's not going to jump for jumping sake. He's not a player who, well, he proves it in the summer with the AC Milan and Dortmund interest. He's not just going to move to a big club for the sake of it. He's going to be wanting to play regular first team football. Um, if one of those big clubs do sort of come in for him, I'm not convinced that he will be completely convinced by it or he will need convincing to uh, to make that move because he will need assurances over the uh, the level of involvement in the first team because we've seen it with so many players before that come to a big club they get lost in the system where they're stockpiling young prospects and then they end up getting loaned back to the championship and it just the season their uh, their career just kind of fizzles out really and they get to 24 25 they haven't really kicked on as expected and they become these sort of overpaid championship level players who can't really secure a move elsewhere because they're earning too much money. Um, I think for Vandenberg, I think it'll be very, very important um, to make a, to make the right step in his career. Um, Michael Carrick will be desperate to keep hold of him, but it's crucial he's part of Middlesbrough's business model. Every player does have a price. Um, the whole setup of what we're doing at the moment is based on bringing players in and then selling them on for a uh, fifty profit. We did it with Morgan Rogers. He was only at the club for six months before we sold him on. So I think the fact that Vandenberg's been at the club for 12 months, I don't think you can rule out an exit based on that alone. But I think crucially for the Dutchman, I think it's going to have to be a move that suits him, one that suits him for the long term. And for Middlesbrough, they need to know that they've got a proper asset on their hands here. Um, this isn't going to be a situation, in my opinion, where they should be holding out for 10 million, 12 million, something like that. He's a player who, for me, could be a player in the, uh, the next two or three. Um, and so it's crucial that Middlesbrough value him as such. Make sure that if he does move on this summer, we are getting top dollar. For me, I'd be also be including a, a sell-on clause in there as well, because I could see him getting a move to a, a top, top club in the uh, in the years to come. And Middlesbrough don't want to be um, missing out on a, a sizable amount of money for that. Uh, we, we did bring him in. We have given him the opportunity to, to kick on and show what he's capable of. So if he does move on, I think the price has just got to be absolutely right. But yeah, speaking with my heart, I would love Vandenberg to stay at the club. Um, he's, a, he's a massive player. He's, a, he's one of our biggest leaders, um, which is, I don't know, impressive. On one hand, also a little bit depressing that, um, that a teenager is our biggest leader because it probably shows the lack of leadership in the rest of the team. But for me, I would love to see him stay for another season, uh, help us out, help us push towards hopefully what would be a potential promotion pusher next season um, and then see where we are at that point. But um, I think as far as the interest in him is concerned, absolutely not surprised. He's a top level operator. He's uh, an old head on young shoulders. Um, and he's, uh, he's someone who, in my opinion, is destined for the very, very top. Um, hopefully that would happen with Middlesbrough, but I think the real, the gut feeling um, of myself and a number of uh, other Middlesbrough fans is that probably his time at Middlesbrough is, um, yeah, it's going to be a short-term thing. I think he's going to move on to bigger and better things. And frankly, he deserves it because he's a quality operator and it would be great to see him kick on and show exactly what he can do at the highest level. So yeah, please stay the summer, Rav. But um, after that, yeah, just make sure we get so many Middlesbrough players who were facing an uncertain future this summer. Um, a lot of them, um, the couple of loan deals coming to an end, there's contracts coming to an end, and ultimately big decisions need to be made on players in and around that first team as to whether they're cutting the mustard. Um, too many to cram into one video. Um, I will be discussing more of them over the, uh, the coming weeks and months. Uh, but yeah, as far as I'm concerned, uh, please do hit subscribe on the uh, on the channel. 
Um, I really do appreciate your support, and uh, yeah, there'll be a lot more middles for coverage coming in the uh, in the coming weeks. Um, and yeah, fingers crossed for a, a good result and uh, to keep pushing towards that uh, that top six. Thanks a lot.